You know, we've been looking at our old YouTube videos and we saw one there that was our go-to lighting setup. And looking at it now, that's not our go-to anymore. So I feel like we kind of need to make an updated video. And today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go through our go-to setup and uh, we're going to break it down, why we made those choices, and then we're going to show you how we work it and how we set it up. Let's go to the cage, which probably looks a lot different than it did. I don't know when the last time we when's the last time we showed them the cage. For the tether cart. For the tether cart. Okay, which is actually the first thing we're gonna pull out. We've been shooting a little bit different with headshots, and um, we will continue to evolve as um, we like to think. Our taste changes, you know. Um, we discover things here and there, but you know, it always starts with the tether cart. And we love this cart so much. If you want to know how we built it, um, link right there. Can you see me pointing? There it is. <laughs> if you know, <laughs> oh, you panned away again. All right, while that boots up, we're going to get the light set up. So we still use Godox light. Um, we love them. Some people swear by pro photos. But you know, these, these get the job done and uh, they've been very reliable for us. So. We actually use, for this setup, which we're gonna show you, the white commercial look, we use a total of five lights. Five of these 600s, actually two 600 Pros and three regular 600s. So we're gonna put those in the C-stands right here. And if you don't have wheels, get wheels, because, I mean, we're lazy and they're just so much fun. Also, these 600, are not necessary for headshots. For headshots, you don't need as much power because the lights are gonna be closer to your subject. But we use them for full body shots too. And we like to shoot at a high aperture, which we'll show you later. It's okay to shoot it not wide open. It's not gonna kill you or anything. You don't have to shoot one point to everything. All right, so we kind of have this setup that is Inspired by, if you're a headshot photographer, you would know Peter Hurley, which is sort of like the triangle setup. Um, he does his with continuous light. Is that rain? <laughs> is that hail? That is pretty loud. Oh! oh it's okay, this is not very common in San Diego. Oh, hell no! <laughs> no, nothing? Fine. We got those two lights in the stand. We're gonna go get some soft boxes. And for this, we like to use strip boxes. And um, we should probably label these because always a struggle to find the right strip boxes. But I think this is one. Okay. We use two of those. We like to use the glow strip boxes because they're just so easy and lightweight. And they're pretty affordable. I mean, build quality, I've seen better build quality, but if you're going to use them in studio and they're not going to go through all the elements of nature, they should do you just fine. This is the wrong one. This is the 31 by 47. So yeah, these, these might be a little too big for headshots. You'll see in a little bit later when you're uh, trying to pack them in the bag or you have very limited space. <laughs> This is like a full body rig right here. But if you got the space, why not? So this go left and right. And again, we're going for a very commercial look with zero shadows, which is really flattering. It works really well, especially for women. Um, sometimes we do like to get moody and, and have a little bit of a ratio with our lighting with men. So those go left and right, and they kind of form a little, we're gonna form a triangle here. So what we used to do, and we'll link the video, is we used to use an eyeliner. An eyeliner is like a curved reflector, which is still really nice. Um, it's still a, a slightly different look, but it's not controllable. I mean, it's just bounce light. So if you want to turn it up, turn it down, you don't have as much control as what we're gonna do here, which we're gonna use 
another light. So we're gonna grab another 600D. And again, you don't need three 600Ds for this. This setup is actually still cheaper than the continuous light that Westcott, um, the Peter Hurley Westcott lights. All right, so this is the curve reflector. Curve softbox, sorry, it's not a reflector. All right, so this is our new eyeliner. The nice thing about the eyeliner is it curves around the face and it really fills in the shadow that the two top lights create. It also creates a nice catch light where it follows the shape of the eyes. So we get this 600D, put it on the stand. Since this um, 600D increases the height a little bit of this soft box, you really need a, a very short stand. Unless you're shooting like a very tall subject, which happens from time to time. Then we need ladders or apple boxes. Okay, so we just form this triangle right here and then we fine tune it depending on the subject height. And in this case, we're gonna need a subject. Let's show them a little bit of what this whole setup looks like. I got a grid on one, okay. That's not a good thing, not for this setup. Five lights, three on the subject. And if you look up there, there's two that's pointed to the background. And those lights are what's gonna turn the background white. Since you're holding the camera, let's, let's find somebody else. Naomi, what you doing? Um, what's that? Solve the Rubik's Cube. What, what step are you on? Um, the cross. The oh, cross. okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, if you haven't seen before, you might have heard her voice previously. This is Naomi. Hi. This is, uh, <laughs> she's been working us for three weeks now, right? Yeah, yeah nice, nice. Um, can we borrow you for a sec? Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can take the cube, you can take the cube. Um, and then I'm gonna turn on the modeling lights. So maybe let's dim the ambient light so we can see what this looks like. These two lights, we have them as pretty much the main light. But they do cast a little bit of shadow under the chin because they're angled downwards. So we use this light to fill that in. So let's show what this looks like without the bottom light. So that's without the bottom light. And then we turn it on and there you go. That's for the bottom light. We're gonna use the A7 IV. The A7 IV we've been, um, we've been using for a little bit, but I would say it's still kind of in our test phase. Um, we're trying to see how, um, how it really fits into our workflow, but so far so good. Really loving the colors, really loving the, the quality that it, it outputs us. And for headshots, it's really, really more than enough. We've been using a Canon 5D for a little bit. And um, I don't know why this is welcoming me and stuff, but I'm trying to get out of this screen. Um, hey God, um, <laughs> we've used this computer before, I swear. All right, we're live. So we're gonna grab this camera and for headshots, we generally like to stick with 70 to 200 because that gives us uh, the compression that we like around 135-ish. So we got a 70 to 100 here, Sony. We got the a7 IV with a couple fresh batteries here. Um, shout out to Battery Wall. Check out that video if you're interested and grab an SD card. Which 64 gigs is fine for now because it's just really a backup because everything's saved to the tether station as well as backed up to the server. So three copies. <laughs> That's how paranoid we are. And sometimes we still lose files. I'm just kidding. We don't. We never lose files. Get a nice tripod because lenses are heavy. We're lazy. Also stability, which we need in our lives sometimes. <laughs> Transmitter, important. I was pointing to those lights up there. Those are, um, those are 8600s. They are usually battery powered, but you can get these adapters to plug them to the wall so that we never have to charge those. And um, we just have to turn them on and off using the transmitters. Okay, so we have those two lights as group A, bottom light as group B. 
we usually like to set them in a two to one ratio. First thing we do is we take a shot of ambient light. So no flash, everything off, and it should look black. Um, also, if you have this battery grip, it kind of gets in the way of mounting it on this. Yeah, and then you have to turn it back. Have you found that? Has that happened to you? Yeah, I just turn it You just off. turn it to the side, right? Yeah. Use your Tether software of choice. We like Capture One. Capture One is just the fastest for us. All right, we're gonna create a new session. <laughs> What's this guy doing? What get get this shot? Uh -oh. <laughs> so here we go. Cameras, cameras on now. <laughs> you want to shoot at your maximum sync speed to get rid of as much ambient light while not pushing your flashes to high speed sync. If you want to learn more about high speed sync, we have a video about that too. I think two fifty is uh, sync speed for a seven four. Um, but let's just shoot at 200 to be safe. We'll figure that out later. Okay, and then you want to bring your ISO to your lowest native, which in this case is on video mode. So you want to switch to photo mode too. <laughs> We're going to check what ambient exposure looks like, and this should be a complete or near complete black frame. There you go. Even with our psych lights on, the video lights on, we still get a black picture, meaning none of those lights are affecting our shot. So I'm going to turn on the transmitter. Since we use this a lot, we know proper exposure here looks like a 16th of a power on the top lights and then a 32nd on the bottom lights. We're going to dial this down and then we're going to show you how we do this using a color checker. Oh, that's looking nice. Cooler than the bag of ice. All right, I'm going to stop there. To dial down the exposure, we use this thing, which is a color checker. So this color checker is useful for a few things, white balance, exposure, and color calibration. So when we're shooting, we don't do any actual color calibration. What we do is we use this patch right here, which is the patch fourth from the white. And we use this as middle gray, because this should be at an exposure of 127 and I'm going to show you how that works later. 127 is proper exposure so you should get that on capture one but we like to shoot a little bit uh, hotter so we, we usually aim for the 150 160 mark. So I'm going to hand this to Naomi so we can use this as a reference photo and make sure they're not covering any of the colors. There you go. Looking right here, look at that. First thing we do here is we check the exposure using this patch right here. And if you can see, Capture One shows you the, the values right here. And the values are 160, 162, 158, 163. And we want that to be around 160, which is pretty close. I'm just gonna have her step back a little bit um, to kind of uh, drop that exposure to 160. Proper exposure is actually at 127. And let me show you what that looks like. That's 127. Um, that's proper middle grade exposure. We like to expose like two thirds higher just because it's personal taste. We think it, it's more flattering for portraits. So we're gonna keep it at that. To white balance, you're gonna grab the color picker right here. And then you're just gonna click on that patch. And now it's white balance. All subsequent shots, all the other shots after this are gonna be white balance to that setting. And then we're gonna show you what these lights are doing. Okay, so first let's, let's, uh, let's just shoot a lights. All right, so A lights, the top on the triangle with no curve. Here we go. Chin down a little bit. There you go. Yeah. So if you look at this shot, it's a nice shot. There's a little bit more shadow under the chin. Uh, but if we're going for a commercial high key look, we're going to need that bottom one. So I'm going to turn on the bottom once again. Nice. Ooh, she got it. There you go. Look at the look at the catch light right there, and you can see you can see where that triangle setup comes in, where you have these two lights, and then you have a nice curved bottom light, which I need to adjust a little bit. Look, looking at it now, we're gonna just get this bottom light right here. 
a little higher angle so that it curves a little better on her face. All right, generally you want the subject to be an arm's length away from this light because these are pretty big lights. If you're using those small continuous Westcott or if you're using soft boxes that are a little bit smaller, you can get a little bit closer. So this, this is perfect right now where it's at. We get great coverage here and um, all the lights are hitting her <laughs> face. So when, if you come around here, we'll show you what that looks like if she's the wrong distance from the light. Okay, so Naomi, why don't you get as close as you can. There you go. And you can see now the lights are almost shooting behind her. And um, you can see now there's a shadow right in the middle of her face versus when she steps back a little bit, you see those shadows get filled in. Now I'm going to turn on those lights up there and turn that background white. She knows what to do. You don't have to tell her anything. She just turns it on and boom. Now we check the background lights. So red means it's completely overexposed, which is what we want for those lights. We don't want any color information there. We just want them completely white. So I'm going to boost that a little bit more and I'm going to crop in to what a headshot to, should look like. Ooh, look at that. All right, let's check. Exposure warning and we're pretty much there. It's a little sliver in there, but that's, that's easily editable. Um, also, what we don't want to do is over boost the background because if your background is white, it's acting like a large reflector. So let me show you what that looks like. I am okay with not having it completely white because if we just want to blow the background away and turn it up, it's going to look like that. So now you see we lost all contrast here and you can see the difference between the two. In this shot, lights bouncing back to the camera, lights bouncing back behind her, it's filling stuff up. Um, we're losing a lot of contrast and color versus this shot where we can see the, the skin tone a little bit more. And if we show the exposure warning, yes, it's completely white, but so is a part of her shoulder right here and a part of her hair and a little bit on the cheek. So we don't want to go that far. Let me back off. All right. Show us what you got. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, you do this for a living? <laughs> there you go. That's a nice headshot. Okay. Looking through the camera. There you go. More approachable though. More approachable. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what our headshot uh, setup looks like. And that's the current one. And who knows, maybe... A month from now, a year from now, it, you know, we add little things here and there, we change it up. Uh, but we wanted to show you what that looks like at this moment. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have any, if you have any suggestions or opinions, comments on uh, what, what we could do to change it up, make it look better, let us know. As always, I hope this was helpful. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks, JP, for manning the gimbal for 30 minutes. Um, if you liked the video, Hit like. If you didn't like it, hit this like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.